All right, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday AMA. <clears throat> uh, for anybody that doesn't know, today has, or this week actually, has been a pretty interesting week. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, firstly, uh, sorry for missing Monday's AMA. Uh, this week had also been a very interesting week on my behalf. I had a bunch of personal things that I had to deal with. Um, but everything is pretty much all uh sorted out now so everything's good on my end um but we did have some interesting stuff stuff happen to our project right so <laughs> the uh ether scan glitch is back it looks like it looks like we have this happen at least once every few months at this point but <laughs> it, it's showing uh it's showing the top holders are worth 300 and 80 what is that million or billion dollars right now <laughs> i wish that were the case but um it's just a ether scan glitch i'm sure you guys already know this is the first time this has happened to us so um they'll fix it they'll fix it eventually um we are on track as well to hit thirty thousand holders fairly quickly here right now we're sitting at twenty eight thousand two hundred and fifty nine um which is a pretty nice number i'm not gonna lie like the the rate of which we're growing is pretty consistent at this point uh doesn't show any signs of slowing down and i think the consistency is going to be a pretty big key factor into the growth of the project and where we're going to be headed so i mean at this rate you think about it like this right like people who have youtube channels and whatnot right um if you ever followed like a YouTuber from early on and when they didn't have many subscribers um, and you follow their journey to like, you know, a million or 2 million subscribers, it's pretty quick how that snowball effect goes, uh, you know, starts taking form, right? Once you reach a certain number, your growth um, takes it to the next level. So instead of like gaining a hundred holders a week, we might gain like 200, to 500 and then the more um the higher that number gets the more those numbers actually multiply so we're actually seeing that happen as our holder count goes up too um <clears throat> honestly with the the amount of marketing that we've done in the past like three to five months it hasn't been much right we've had we've been doing our marketing but we've been keeping it at a pretty uh pretty small scale compared to what what's upcoming here you know very shortly and seeing the growth even with the little marketing that we were doing is truly amazing because that just means that the community is doing its part by you know um interacting with the content that we put out there whether it's on twitter instagram facebook telegram whatever discord um and you know the word of mouth is more powerful than anything obviously we're at a stage in in time where people really like are able to diagnose what they're looking at nobody likes to look at ads i hate looking at advertisements when i'm scrolling and an ad pops up i don't even pay two seconds of attention to it right and i'm sure you guys don't either it's a nuisance people don't like it so what's a more effective way to get <clears throat> the word out there and what's a more effective way to actually like, you know, fill people in as to what we're doing here is to actually just kind of have it be done in an organic way where we're not just out there, you know, putting out some like, uh, you know, low quality ads or whatever that people are going to ignore. And honestly, we've done that and it, it hasn't worked as, as good as, we ex expected or or as good as you'd want it to work right actually and on the contrary the, the these platforms youtube facebook whatever they don't even like crypto ads they they block them out so it's like we when we run those it actually does more uh, it actually hurts us more than it benefits us because we we might get throttled on that certain platform for running a crypto related ad or whatever um obviously now with the new change in youtube i don't know if you guys um 
know what's going on there, but their CEO stepped down and the new CEO is, uh, he's like a crypto guy, right? This guy, he's like all into NFTs and he's into crypto and he's into uh, Web3. So we might start seeing some changes um, on advertisement on YouTube. And if that does happen, then yeah, I mean, for sure, YouTube videos and ads, like they, they will definitely be something that we'll be looking into. Um, but for the time being, we have a pretty organic system that we're kind of like we've been deploying but now obviously with the EFTs coming and the whole pretty much ecosystem shifting towards like <clears throat> what we're trying to introduce with our our ecosystem with the tokens and with the NFTs we're going to have to do a little bit more mar marketing to get you know people on board to understand what we're trying to do for the future of of DeFi for the future of I don't want to say DeFi but for like you know um, the way that people interact with their NFTs and with their tokens. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, I'm just honestly pretty, pretty much looking at these numbers and I'm happy with the way that things are working out. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the, the growth and just the consistency of it. It just like, like I said, it's pretty much on the dollar, on the dot. It hasn't, hasn't declined. It's always been, you know, going up in its pace and, I don't know if that has anything to do with these um, these glitches that happen every now and then, but I do I do love it when this glitch happens because it's just like one of the biggest like meme things that could happen to <laughs> to a meme coin, right? So um, I just wish people didn't freak out when this happened. Um, we do get a little bit of fud from the people that don't know why it happens. Obviously, it happens because it's like a reporting glitch that that's been going on with EtherScan for a uh, pretty long time this is probably the fourth or fifth time this has happened already so they'll fix it in a few days <clears throat> but we are approaching the end of february so we do have pretty much a lot of stuff that are coming and we have a bunch of people who kind of oh before i get into this actually let me let me mention what had happened with the minting site and um that's all fully resolved too it was like a a a pretty pretty like annoying thing that happened so when a lot of big projects actually got hit by this too um people go and report sites right and when people report sites they just automatically get filtered into some like github thing i don't really understand too too much about it or whatnot but somebody had went and reported our site and it got flagged as like a like a spam site and metamask had you know blacklisted it or whatever but we, we went in there and kind of like, you know, told them what had happened and they looked into it and they realized that it was a false, um, false ban or false blacklist or whatever. So that very quickly got resolved. So if anybody had any questions about that or was, you know, kind of concerned about that, I can actually send a link here in one second um, in the chat that'll direct you to our appeal on that and kind of like clear the air if anybody had any doubts or if anybody had any questions about that, let me just pull this up real quick. And sorry if I do sound out of it. Like I said, guys, um, I had a pretty, pretty rough week uh, personally, uh, but I'm, like I said, I'm good now and time to get the ball rolling. Give me one second. I'm actually posting this in here right now. Okay, there it is. Okay, so yeah, if anybody wants to look at that, you can. I'm not gonna pin it um, just because I don't want to pin that. But if you guys want to pin um, forward it or whatever, if anybody asks, that's the link to our appeal. It could show that we you know um, that the moderators and everything kind of looked into it and realized that it was all a mistake. So. Um, yeah, that was a pretty big scare on our end because I was, we woke up and, and saw them. We were like, what the hell is going on? And obviously we had zero clue, zero idea of why that anything like that happened. But then, you know, after a little bit of looking into it, we realized that it's a pretty common thing that's been happening to a lot of big projects, just a bunch of trolls on out there on the internet trying to troll people. So I mean, we were a target of that, but which is which is cool. It's fine. That just means we're getting acknowledged by people, right? 
Um, next week we do have a staking AMA too, guys. By the way, um, we'll be talking about everything to expect in season three. Um, we'll be talking about when season three is coming out. We'll be talking about all the numbers. We'll be talking about pretty much all in all everything you guys are going to want to know um, about season three. So that's something that we're excited about uh, to be able to bring to the table here. Let me see. I have to look here too real quick. One second. If anybody has like any questions that you feel free to feel free to cut me off at any time. Also, I understand the point of not burning too much so people don't sell, but also the huge quantity of tokens turns most people off, even meme-loving ones. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess some people could think like that, but then also a lot of people think the, the exact opposite way. Um, to answer your question, uh, there, there is a large audience of people that love the, the supply, and then there is an audience of people that don't, you know, and that, that works for any project, right? You know, I, I can see um, that being a double-edged sword from, you know, it's just an opinion thing. But at the end of the day, it's like, who doesn't want to have a sextillion tokens, right? Who doesn't want to have, you know, quintillions of tokens? I, I think it's awesome. I think it's cool to have, you know, a, a pretty crazy number like that. There isn't many projects out there that have a supply this big. So that really makes us stand out uh, tremendously. You know, we puts us in a niche. Johnny Utah says he wants two sextillion. See, um, <laughs> I mean, I, I personally like that's just a point of opinion, right? I mean, I, I can't tell you what you like and what you don't like, but I could tell you that there is a large group of people that love tokens that have a large supply. And obviously there are people like you who prefer a lower supply. So you just got to find a nice balance, I guess, um, learn to adapt or, or, Try to play catch up, I guess. I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you, but <laughs> it's a good question. Um, yeah, so there, there are burns happening pretty much passively every day. With, uh, each transaction causes a certain amount of, of tokens to be burned passively. Will there be any more manual burns in the future? Um, I don't want to say no, but I also don't want to say yes. That's just something that we'll have to to, to just wait and see um, what the scenario on that is. But um, the beautiful thing is, you know, we're we're a year in, and we've already burned fifty five percent of of our token supply, which is pretty massive it's pretty large supply as of as of right now um that's pretty solid if we could burn another five to ten percent by the end of this year or you know within within the one year scenario i think we're going to be on a pretty nice schedule to be a hyper deflationary token as far as shiba doge goes right um burn token on the other hand is on a whole different ballpark and that's going to actually um be kind of like the standard of what hyper deflationary tokens even mean. Um, talking about burn, uh, after we have our staking AMA and after we have um, pretty much, yeah, after we have our staking AMA, what I'll do is I'll plan out uh, the burn AMA too, because we're kind of ready to start sharing information with you guys at this point. So no more, no more um, uh, beating around the bush. We'll, we'll kind of we'll set a date and and we'll go ahead and have the burn burn AMA and we do actually have some cool things in store for burn which you guys will will learn about very shortly. Uh, we do have a couple of announcements for burn as well too that we will make on that AMA. Uh, so there you know things are things are looking bright things are looking good. Uh, on on another note, something very bullish happened today in Web three 
for Ethereum specifically. Uh, and I think it's going to be something that really, really brings uh, a lot of attention back to Ethereum. And obviously, you guys know, since we are paired with Ethereum, as Ethereum gets attention and as Ethereum gets traction, um, we also benefit from that tremendously. Uh, you know, if Ethereum hits ten thousand uh, dollars, our our token benefits heavily from that, right? So, Coinbase actually released some information today, and let me pull up this article before I start giving you guys false information. I don't want to guess what I'm saying. Okay, so here it is. So, Coinbase announces they they announced a product called Base. It's an Ethereum layer two, and it's supposed to, that they predict is going to bring 1 billion plus users into the Ethereum uh, ecosystem. 1 billion people, that's, that's massive. So here's what they tweeted. They said, <clears throat> we're excited to announce build on base. Base is a Ethereum L2 that offers a secure, low cost, developer-friendly way for anyone, anywhere to build decentralized apps. Our goal with BASE is to make on-chain the next online and onboard 1 billion plus users into the crypto economy. <clears throat> Another uh, tweet that someone had made um, kind of in regards to this, they said, Coinbase is launching a layer two. Coinbase has 110 million users. They're about to onboard them all onto Ethereum. This is a massive day for Ethereum. This is how the world. This is how the world goes bankless. Um, I'm very bullish on this, guys. Um, obviously, there are other layer two solutions out there, but this is this is uh, something that actually comes with already a large audience of people that are interested in crypto. You know, there's things like Polygon out there, um, which I still have to do a little bit of research into base and kind of see exactly what they do and exactly what they're all about. But from the very uh, short amount of time that I did read about it, I think it could be a massive, massive tool, even in our project, for us to start developing using that layer two um, uh, uh, software that's coming out, right? Or uh, whatever, because we can um, you know, have staking seasons on there that will be cheaper for uh, gas fees. We can have uh, a lot of our games in the future be built on those types of platforms. We could have our uh, EFT collections work on a lot of those platforms, which will save a ton of gas fees. We could have just a whole bunch of things that are going to be pretty, pretty useful, right? So I'm bullish. Uh, I was happy to see that. I was happy to see that there is new things coming to Ethereum. I mean, just the news alone to, you know, that, that a, you know, a Fortune 500 company out there in the world is trying to onboard a billion plus people onto Ethereum is uh, bullish enough for me to think that Ethereum can reach new all-time highs, you know, just based off the sheer amount of people that are going to be coming into it. So hopefully they're successful in their endeavors to do that. Obviously, you know, we support Shiba Doge. That, that means we obviously support ETH too. Um, Obviously, later down the line, when we're paired on different blockchains, we'll start supporting those blockchains too. But as of right now, ETH is ETH is daddy to us, right? So <laughs> um, we want it to do well. We want Shiba Dosh to do well, um, and I think we're we're doing a pretty pretty good job here, man. I mean, like we're kind of close to like I'm looking at our charts too, and our charts back in the eight fives right now, as far as the price goes. So it's getting close to like kind of shedding another zero, which is, I like to see this, man. You know, it's a, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's not a fast, super quick, like, Hey, you know, you're multiplying two X, three X, four X every day or every week. It's a steady growth. And that's the, that's the organic growth that I like. And that's the organic growth that I think everyone should like, because that just means we're building something here that's bigger than 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 hype, right? We don't want we don't want to just be a project that's built off hype. We want to be able to be a, a a project that you know people have attachment to, and a project that people can actually um, you know have sentiment towards. So, <clears throat> super excited, man! The EFTs are are looking really really good. Um, 
I'll probably try to share a few more things with you guys over the next coming days, more screenshots, more, more uh, um, dates and more like kind of, how can I say it, uh, functionality features and stuff like that from the UI UX part of things before you, uh, everything goes live, just so you guys can kind of get a good idea of uh, what else to expect. Obviously, we've already shared a little bit of uh, sneak peeks and whatnot, but it's looking good, man. Everything is looking clean. Everything is looking, looking primed. And honestly, like, there's nobody else doing this. <laughs> there really isn't anybody else doing it. So um, I know there are some big, big projects out there that plan to um, do uh, like not EFT specifically, but like equipables and this and that um, doodles being one of them, but they're honestly like we've looked into it and it's cool and all, but our, our system is way different than theirs. I, I want to say like we support so much more than that, than what they're going to be able to support and just a variety of, of items and the variety of customization and the variety of, uh, functionality that's going to come with it. I don't think anyone's going to be able to compete. Um, is this something that I think can like very quickly make us the number one project? No, I don't think it's going to make us the number one project based off just this alone. But what I think this is going to do is it's going to open up doors for us to actually be able to, to grow our project and bring a lot of attention to our project. Um, you know, Th uh, through these possibilities and through these introductions and uh, people will kind of like realize that, Hey, you know, this team knows what they're doing because obviously the tech that we're building isn't easy to build. Isn't something that amateurs can build. Isn't even something that people who have been in the, the game for years can build this, you know, we've, we've hired a lot of great talent that onboarded a lot of great people to, to, you know, bring our ideas to life. Uh, to a point where when we first had these ideas, people were telling us it's impossible to do and there's no way to do it. Um, you know, fast forward a few months, uh, we got the right people and we were able to bring these wild ideas to life. So that just goes to show you, like, don't let, you know, anyone discourage you to tell you like, hey, it's impossible to do something. Um, you just need to find the right people and surround yourself with the right people and everything is possible. I mean, obviously not, everything but if if it's something that can happen you'll figure out a way to make it happen right so we're just super excited man um yeah if anybody has questions guys just feel free to feel free to cut me off again like i said oh yep i see it i see it says i put this on reddit too once we the question is once we breed doge and shiba to make shiba doge nfts would there be a mechanism to identify the bred nfts will it be like rarity that we will it be like rarity that we have to verify somewhere um yeah so if a doge or a shiba army has been bred um it will show in the metadata as a trait that 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 it's been bred. So you'll be able to like click on it on OpenSea and look at the traits and it'll show you whether it's bred or unbred. Um, and then on top of that, we'll also have a system on our website that you could just go in there and punch in the NFT number. And it will also tell you there whether it's bred or unbred. So yeah, there will be multiple ways for you to determine um, whether it's a virgin or not. <laughs> July says any definitive date on when the free mint will open. Um, I'll, I'll post, I'll post those dates and everything in the chat um, in this next couple of days, July. Um, but yeah, we're, we're pretty much, we're pretty much ready to announce the date and everything. Um, but I'm not going to announce it today, but this, this next couple of days, we will, we will post everything in the chat and pin it. So, so you'll know. Someone's asking, will we be connected to Shibarium? Work with Shibarium? Um, 
I've heard of them, but I haven't really looked into them. Uh, so no, we won't be connected with them. Um, I'll look them up again right now to see. Shwarium confirm. So see, like, it's 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 a layer two. It Shibarium is cool, but I still am trying to understand exactly the benefit of it. Obviously, it benefits Shiba because it's a layer. Two, it's like paired with Shiba, right? So it's like Peter really loves the idea of of having a pair with Shiba. So maybe something like this in the future can happen. We haven't really talked too much about it, but it's very interesting. And um, we'll, we'll look into, after we get all of this stuff out of the way, you know, the, all the things that we're working on right now out of the way, we'll look more into how this can benefit us. Obviously we support Shiba to the very end as well. Um, so if we can find a way to link our project with their project through through Shiba or a layer two or Shibarium or whatever, then obviously we'll we'll try to make that happen. But as of right now, I don't I don't know much about it, and I don't know um, I don't know how to answer your question yet. Chris Scott asks, Have you guys been able to address the creator royalties issue on OpenSea? Um, what do you mean by that? Exactly. Um, uh, do you mean like because they have a zero percent thing going on right now? Hey guys, I'm in the car, so I'm not sure how the sound is. It's just zero percent thing. It's also the fact that I can set up a sale and remove to create a royalty or put it down to zero essentially, which kind of yeah. cuts the project out of everything we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent, man. I, I I know what you're talking about. So um, that's a decision that OpenSea made. Um, they said it's for a limited time. Um, I don't know how long a limited time means. Let me see if it says anything. Here, February yeah, twenty one. But Blur is doing it. You know, other. I know. Other I know. Apps are doing it, and if you read through the uh, the OpenSea literature, it talks about a way to actually restrict or or verify that they're the royalties being paid on chain in the contract. So right. I don't know if you guys even had time to to breathe. So I thought I'd bring it up. Yeah, man. No, we're aware of it. Um, it's really not anything we could, there's really not anything we can do about it, you know, right? Because that's that's what OpenSea, I mean, they're the trading platform that allows users to even uh, set those fees. So if they, if they don't allow us to take a, a fee out of their platform, then there's really nothing we can do about it. Obviously, it's not ideal. Um, obviously we, we understand that, you know, like it sucks that we're not getting royalties out of, out of the project right right now through OpenSea, but like I said, hopefully it's temporary and it stops and everything goes back to normal. But if not, um, I think, <clears throat> I think it benefits users in the long run even more and it benefits people actually wanting to trade um nfts back and forth because of the less fees not just in uh, our our project but in every other project any nft other any every other nft project out there so um it could be beneficial if you look at it in that point of view um but i'm not too worried because like i said when when um the eft stuff rolls around uh our main focus is going to be kind of just like being able to pump out as many cool accessories as we can to you guys and like just be able to bring um, so much customization where, you know, the lower fees will actually be better for people if they want to pick things up uh, off of OpenSea or off of these exchanges where, you know, it'll, it'll actually end up uh, being beneficial, but we'll see, man. I, it's not the end of the world and it's not something that's going to affect our project too much in the long run, whether it stays at zero or whether it goes back, it, it's, 
it's very minuscule as as to uh, the effects it has on us. So I'm not too worried about it, Chris. All right, man. Thanks. Yeah, of course, bro. No problem. I mean, I would take advantage of it, uh, guys. If if you guys have been wanting to pick up an NFT or whatever, um, you know, they have zero percent royalties going on right now on most exchanges. So kind of makes sense. Um, I know that I I probably will look into picking up probably like a higher end NFT um, because you know if you pick up something that's worth like you know. 10, 20, 30 grand, that seven and a half, 10% royalty fees that some projects charge can save you a ton of money, right? So maybe I'll do a little bit of shopping, who knows? Yo, it's Cousin KK. Hey cousin, how are you, bro? Very well, very well. How you doing, how you doing? Doing good, bro, doing good, thank you. Just a quick question on the back of that question. Um, what is the realistic time frame, if you have one, for the Shiba Doge trading platform? Um, so it's not going to be like a full on trading platform. Uh, we haven't really even talked much about this at all. Um, but we ideally do have a plan on being able to build something like that. As of right now, we don't have any foundation as to uh, uh, built as to uh, as to that yet. But what we do eventually want to have is have a platform where you guys will be able to trade NFTs and EFTs securely on our website without having to use OpenSea or without having to use any third party stuff. So um, we haven't looked into building it yet, but we've talked into we've talked with the people that it um that are gonna be part of building it and they let us know that it is doable and what it's going to take and all that so uh the next steps would be to actually kind of you know introduce everything that we want to introduce into our ecosystem and then followed by um you know bringing that bringing that to life so that's not going to be like an immediate thing and that's not something that that'll be like coming out soon but but it is something that we want to be able to introduce to to you guys in our community for sure. Excellent, understood. I just remember that was mentioned a little while back. I just wanted to know slight status. Thank you. Yeah, for sure, bro. Of course, and I think that's going to be a game changer, uh, especially like because we're very inspired by the things that Yuga Labs did recently. Um, I don't know if you guys have been paying too much attention to to what they've been doing, but they have this game going on. And um, the game, in a sense, you know, the, the the guy who got first place on that game got like a one of one NFT and, you know, people are offering like 200, 300 ETH for that NFT right now. Obviously, Yuga Labs is insanely big, right? They're creators of Bored Ape and creators of you know, Mutant Apes and whatnot. So everybody knows about them and everyone knows that they're the leaders in the space. But regardless, they're... they're is tons of people playing this game. And whether you get first place or not, at the end, you get a reward at the end of your game. Um, you get a ranking and you get a reward and you get um, prizes that you could claim with those rewards. Now their prizes are kind of like status things, like their um, names or just points or like, you know, things that'll help you out in the game, like little perks or whatever. But we got inspired by that and we were like, hey, why don't we try to build something that's similar to this? But instead, the rewards can be like very rare NFT, uh, not NFTs, EFTs, equipable NFTs that the community can get by only playing games like this, right? So it's like, um, you don't have to buy it. You just, you know, play the game and if, uh, you know, you get a certain uh, amount of score or reach a certain level, then then you get rewarded with these. So we'll see. We'll see how how that goes. But we're very inspired by that, man. And I, I do think that we can incorporate, uh, I, I, not that we could, I think we're going to have to incorporate a, a game with our ecosystem at some point in the future, just because there's just so many opportunities for us to be able to um, 
kind of scale that up to a bigger thing and be able to bring more interaction to the project in the future. And I mean, it would be cool to have a game to begin with anyway. So um, we always thought it was like a gimmick and we always thought that it was a, um, just like something that, you know, projects announce and talk about just to kind of like build hype and whatnot. Uh, so I was never a big fan of the Web3 games, but after I saw what Yuga Labs did very recently, we realized like, hey, you know, you just have to do it right. And when you do it right, and when you take your time and you actually build something that's that's cool and that's uh, something that people can appreciate, then you're not going to have any issues. You're, you're actually going to be benefiting yourself. I think they were making something like, dude, I think they were making something like a million dollars a day from their game. That's how much uh, money that the company Yuga Labs was generating um, from their game alone, which is pretty insane. So yeah, I think a game can definitely be beneficial to the project. No, definitely. That's, that's bullish. That's good to hear. Yeah, man. Sounds great. Man. Sounds great. YouTube, any airdrops for us live? <laughs> um, no, <laughs> uh, not today. But we will do. We will do more. We will do more giveaways pretty soon. Um, uh, obviously, with the EFT stuff coming out, we we want to give away a bunch more EFTs. So um, there will be opportunities to to win some. Uh, obviously we're going to be ho hosting some contests and stuff like that um, when the EFTs go live or even bef right before they go live. So, so there's some opportunity there for sure. And plus okay. just randomly too, you know, you, you guys know how we are. We just randomly decide to do giveaways here and there. So, you know, you might just check on the pin messages here, uh, you know, any day and you'll, you might see we announce something. Oh, listen, damn, LOL. <laughs> Sorry, bro. There's a question in the chat. It says, would Shiba Doge ever create its own blockchain like Shib did with its Shibarium? Um, I don't think that's out of the question. Um, I don't think that's out of the question at all. I, I don't see why we would need a blockchain yet, but I, I do think that it would be fun to have our own blockchain. Uh, I don't see a use case for it just yet, but I mean, we we do have a bunch of talented people on our team, and this question has came up. If if uh, you guys were tasked with having to develop a blockchain, would you be able to? And I'm pretty confident that with the team we have, we can, if we wanted to, build a very very solid blockchain. Um, the only problem with that is the, the only problem with that is actually like why would we even want it right like do we really want to compete with bitcoin do we really want to compete with ethereum and you know all these other insanely big names out there and if we did want to compete with them why do we want to compete with them um so those are still questions that uh, haven't been answered. Um, but as we, we mature and as we, you know, move forward with this ecosystem, uh, we might find the answers to those questions. And if we find a, um, a meaning for it, then yeah, sure, we will develop our own blockchain. But as of right now, it's not on the list of things to do. Sarah asks, will we be able to sell the bread Shiba Doge anywhere? Not the parents, but the new ones. Yeah, yeah. You'll be able to you'll be able to list your your Shiba Doge NFT anywhere as well. Um the, the bread version and you can even list the parents too if you want. So everything will be open market. You guys will be free to do whatever you want with your NFTs. We just quickly let the uh people live on youtube know about how they get a free nft a bleeded nft yeah for sure so if you own a shiba uh, army nft and a doge army nft 
um, we're actually releasing a function where you can breed them to create a, a bread version, which we call the Shiba Doge. Um, and it will be completely free to do as long as you own a pair of those NFTs. Um, when you breed and you get a Shiba Doge NFT, you're also going to be getting a bunch of DNFTs, which are also EFTs, equipable NFTs. So your, your breeding won't just give you one item, which will be the Shiba Doge. Uh, your breeding will give you multiple items, which will be your Shiba Doge plus all of the items that come equipped on it. And in some cases, those items can be one of ones, legendaries, epics. So um, there's there's a chance for you guys to get some really, really rare, really, really cool stuff out of breeding. So I think I think breeding is going to be pretty fun. And I think it's going to be something that you guys are going to love. Cody's asking, hey, Leo, uh, will we be able to see which two NFTs made the Shiba Doge NFT? Um, I believe you will be able to um, backtrack it. I believe you can. Um, I don't know if we have something on our UI that'll show you, but the blockchain will show you. The blockchain will show you which two NFTs uh, interacted with each other to make um, that bread NFT. But... I don't know if we have it on our UI or not. We might, but I'd have to double check. But before you even breed your NFTs, like you will have, um, you will get uh, previews of what you're going to get out of it before you even kind of like pull the trigger and, um, you know, do it and, and, you're not going to be left in the dark. You're not going to be doing it blind, right? You'll know exactly what you're going to get, what kind of NFT you'll get, what it'll look like, what it'll come equipped with and all that cool stuff. So um, we made sure to include that functionality in there so that people that have multiple NFTs can kind of tinker around with um, with their pairs and see what works the best for them and, um, and you know, not, not be stuck having to just like be... Uh, breeding and and doing it in the dark and getting something that they're not happy with. We're, we're trying to do everything we can to make you guys happy with um, with options and customization. So um, I think it's going to be a pretty smooth, pretty cool um, process. Elon Vitalik's asking: Do two do two same Shiba and Doge always breed the same traits regardless of time or day or will this depend on what others have bred slash minted at the time um okay good question so as long as as long as some of the bread slash minted well actually no 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 i'm sorry so yeah it will change depending on what others have bred and minted already right so let's say there is a legendary one of one item right let's just say there's a one of one eft item that you can get from breeding if somebody breeds and gets that item before you do then you wouldn't it wouldn't be possible for you to get it so so yeah it i mean they would always give you the same traits regardless time or day but if those traits are already took in and if those traits are already used, then it will regenerate a different trait. Obviously, that's why it's, in my opinion, if you're trying to get the rarer NFTs or EFTs or rarer traits from your breeding, I would try to breed like sooner than later so that the rare items don't all get kind of like sold out in a sense. And, uh, but that's just the way that I'm thinking. Uh, then again, obviously, there's going to be a big market for people who are looking for, um, you know, unbred NFTs, because obviously, you know, those will have some type of uh, uh, sentiment to people, in my opinion. And it's not like it's a guarantee either, right? It's not a guarantee that the uh, one of one EFT is going to be minted out um, on, you know, 
the day one or day two it could be minted out you know like a month into um a month into breeding uh, it's just all random so we'll just have to wait and see but i expect i expect a lot of people to breed on the first week and then i expect it to to slow down a lot and then we'll probably see people breed every now and then but i don't think we'll ever get all of the nfts bred because a lot of people lost their nfts to hackers and stuff and or maybe you know most people don't have pairs but i think we'll have we'll have a good like 60 to 70 percent of our nfts bred but um i think that's a pretty solid number What happens to the original pups after they are bred? Um, nothing happens to them. Uh, you get to keep them. You could still stake them um, in the seasons. Uh, the only thing that will happen to them is the their trait will change from unbred to bred. So people will know that that uh, NFT has been bred, and that's pretty much about it. And you can't breed a NFT twice. So just something to keep in mind. But yeah, guys, um, on another note, we're, we're finalizing a, a, um, another, I'm not going to announce anything because we're still in the process of finalizing it, but we're pretty close on finalizing another exchange for one of our projects. I won't say which, which project it's for, but, um, once that's finalized, we will have another exchange announcement coming up, hopefully in the next few days to a week maybe um some people asking about the airdrop for the mint monday when is that gonna happen um that'll happen sometime this week uh i sent all of the addresses uh, over to peter yesterday um it was supposed to happen sooner but i had just had some pretty big emergencies come up in my personal day the past couple of days so i i literally hadn't checked my phone or anything but yesterday um i forwarded peter all of those addresses so uh it should happen this week cool cool thank you uh crypto crackhead is asking what about prestige levels any change in there um I'm not going to go into prestige levels right now, but yes, prestige levels are going to play a big part in the future. Um, and they're going to play a big part in, in the way that you guys interact with your NFTs in the future, but um, no changes in there as of right now. We, we will talk more about that as, um, as things develop on that end. <clears throat> uh, Crypto is asking how many EFT legendary items? Um, there is quite a bit. We're going to release like a, a spreadsheet pretty soon. That'll give you all the numbers as to how many legendary items there are, how many epics, how many rares, the uncommon, like all that stuff. So so we'll release all that information in the spreadsheet to you guys um, probably in the next couple of days. And, you, and you'll be able to see um, what's up there for grabs. Uh, Nils is asking, can you tell us their ranks? I heard you say legendary and epic. So I believe there is common, there is uncommon, there is rare, there is epic, there is legendary, and there is one of one. I believe those are the six um, ranks. And there will be multiple one of ones. There, it won't just be one one of one. And the thing is, like, we'll release more one of ones, and we'll release more legendary items and epic items in the future too. It's not just limited to what you guys are going to be getting in the crates right now. Uh, as you guys know, this EFT stuff is is a, a, a upgradable smart contract that we've built, where we can continuously keep adding cool new things to the contract and to the project as you know as we uh, make 
make more things, right? So um, it's going to be a cool ecosystem, man. Some people are going to have some really, really dope looking <laughs> NFTs in the future. Um, and just the, the customization is going to, like your, your creativity is going to be your limit, right? So I'm just excited to see what the future holds. Hey, Leo Cousin again. What's up, brother? Hey, yeah. Okay, the EFTs. Now, the mystery box with, from the golden ticket. Yes. Will that be you know, Will that be in the same sense as the legendary and common uncommon, but a, a totally separate sort of like, uh, I, I don't know. Exactly. What? Yeah, exactly. So, so the... Uh, the rankings for the e the uh, EFTs will pretty much all fall in the same category, like you know, rare, legendary, epic, blah blah blah, whatever. But um, the mystery box from the golden ticket is going to pretty much guarantee you a pretty badass item, right? Um, and it's going to be a I don't want to say a one of one because I don't know exactly yet if it's a one of one, but it's it, like you can't get it anywhere else other than mystery crates, right? The items that are going to be in the mystery crates are only going to be in those mystery crates to the limited amount of people that have the golden tickets. And I don't think there are a lot of golden tickets out there. I believe there's like less than 20 golden ticket holders out there, um, which will probably yeah. get airdropped very, very soon. So um, that's going to be yeah. something interesting. Yeah, kind of 19 uh at the event during the event so that's interesting. yeah i think i think that's the number i think there's 19. excellent thank you very much yeah of course man yeah they won't all be the same item either there'll be different people will be getting different items out of it right how about quantities per crate or box or whatever same quantity so we're we're talking about that right now. We're trying to figure out like how we want to do it. Um, it will. It's either going to be like one super rare item, or um, another option would be like a rare item, like like a, again like a pretty rare item uh, accompanied with like um, some other cool items that you can only get out of the mystery box. So we don't know if we want to just do one like spectacular item, or if we want to do like multiple items. If we do multiple items, it's going to take a little bit longer because you know, the artwork is going to take longer. So, so we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but we do definitely want to um, make it special for you guys, for the people that uh, interacted and got a golden ticket. Ah, oh, excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And there will be more opportunities in the future to like get mystery crates and each mystery crate will be different. Like this would be the, the, the first one, right? This is the golden ticket ones, but there will be different types of um, mystery crates that will be introduced in the future as well too. Um, you know, some of them, some of them you'll be able to kind of just like get by, you know, by purchasing one. Some of them you'll be able to claim by participating in events. Some of them you'll just claim by, you know, being active in Telegram. Like um, th there'll be different tiers, you know, some will be more rare than others. Some will be less rare. So there's just a, a bunch of cool cool ways that we're going to be rolling rolling out new items to you guys and i think it's never going to be a dull moment once once that ball gets rolling Any other questions on YouTube or anything, Roof? Yeah. Um, one that you don't like. Um, is there a V2? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, there, there will not be a V2. There will, there, there will never be a V2. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay will there be someone posting daily on twitter 
and replying on the on the other tokens and crypto pages to create more hype uh we post on twitter pretty much almost every day now i believe let me double check but we do have a we do have a dedicated person on twitter that pretty much runs all of the marketing stuff that happened on twitter so right. so yeah i mean we already do that we already do that yeah um there's a question i put in the main chat as well above neil's thanks oh yeah i see it okay let's see <clears throat> question is how would the ranking system work in breeding if i breed a private with a commander what would the shiba doge be highest denomination or the lower so that's a good question the the way that that's going to work is the higher rank the nfts are the higher chance of you getting a um higher ranked bred nft but it's still not a guarantee that you'd get a high like a high rank i mean your chances are a lot higher than if you were to just like breed two privates but the higher the ranks that you breed the higher the chances are but but you can still breed two privates and get lucky and get a one of one or a super rare shiba doge right so um we, we made sure to include like a a little luck factor in there for some people who who don't have the rarest nfts but still give them a you know a small chance to be able to uh you know get a rare item out of it or a rare a trait or a rare a fur or whatever right so um it's still it's still going to be kind of kind of random but you'll you'll be able to see what you're getting like i said in previews it, nothing is going to be nothing is going to be a surprise you'll be able to preview what you're you're getting uh before you pull the trigger and and make your decision cool cool um when will we drop some zeros <laughs> uh i don't know but we're getting close to dropping one i mean the the the, the price is in the high eight so it's pretty close i mean we need like shoot i don't know just a little bit more let's see if we can push through and, and kill a zero that would be pretty bullish I, i'd like to see <laughs> that oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's see what this question is uh stranger danger says i'm not sure if you're a gamer and if so do you remember the pack a punch machine from Call of Duty Black Ops? Uh, I I do remember that actually. Um, it says this machine was used to level up your weapons while playing zombies. What if we had a upgrade section on Warzone? Imagine placing two EFTs into a machine, and in return, the owner ranks up the EFT, basically gets a higher rank or rare item. The machine would basically burn two level one EFTs and give the holder one level two EFT. There are a vast amount of benefits this could bring. It would it could be used to make the supply of EFTs deflationary, and it would be a fun way to introduce different ranks and tiers. It's another way to gamify the NFTs. Um, I love that idea. In fact, I love it so much that we've already built a system like that into um, the contract. So. Um, that is something that we'll be able to support in the future um that is something that that we've already talked about and there will be options for you to kind of like sacrifice uh lower tiered collectibles to to get a higher tiered one so um yeah i love that idea man and i, I hadn't talked about that or announced it or anything yet because um I just hadn't, but now that you bring it up, I'll, I'll let you guys know that that is something that one of our core developers um, actually had probably the same idea, probably from the same inspiration uh, <laughs> from probably from Call of Duty Black Ops. And and he talked about it and and he said that it would be something amazing and we all love the idea. So it got built in. Said man, I love you guys on YouTube. <laughs> we love you too, man.
the crypto market's been looking pretty strong lately though man i'm not gonna lie but then then again it's like the stock market has been looking kind of strong too <clears throat> Uh, Leo, here's one for you. Uh, one of my guys at work said he read that uh, in 10 years, Bitcoin would be 1 million per coin. What do you think about that? I I kind of believe that too. Um, I don't know if it's going to be in 10 years, but I do think at some point in the future, uh, we'll see a million dollar Bitcoin. Um I don't know exactly what the time frame on that would look like, but I, I do believe that Bitcoin will get up to a million dollars. That that's something that uh, I'm a firm believer on. Wow, interesting. Yeah, I actually hold a lot of Bitcoin myself, so if if that happens, I'll be I'll be happy. <laughs> sure, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I bought Bitcoin. Me. I bought Bitcoin expensive, guys. I'm not gonna lie. Like the first time I bought Bitcoin, it was very cheap. But I I eventually FOMO'd on Bitcoin, probably around like fifty something thousand dollars per coin, uh, and I, I put a pretty significant amount of money in there. Um, I'm I'm down on Bitcoin right now, but I I don't care. I don't look at it. Um, I, I know what it can be in the future and what it's going to, you know, well, what it can kind of like happen with Bitcoin in the future. So did I, do I regret buying it at 50 something thousand dollars? Yeah. Yeah. I do regret buying it at 50 something thousand dollars, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> it like happens. You, like you always say, if you sell, then you lose, right? If you, if you haven't sold. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm I'm not, like I'm not DCAing because I already have so much and I put so much in there, right? I I, I bought a lot, um, right? But I might pick up a little bit more just to kind of like bring my average down. Um, I don't know. I don't think I need any more Bitcoin though because if Bitcoin hits like a hundred grand or two hundred grand, then I'll already be in a pretty crazy position so it's like i don't want to get greedy about it because it's it's not cheap you know even even at the prices right now it's still it's still very expensive um but but i, I do think that bitcoin is powerful and um I, I i love our token the best shiba doge is the best but i i do think bitcoin is the most powerful coin out there oh yeah Definitely. We like Bitcoin. Hey, if Bitcoin does good, everyone in the crypto space does good. So exactly. If you look at Bitcoin and Ethereum, I mean, the, if you look at both charts, they, they move exactly the same. Yeah, literally. Sometimes Ethereum outperforms Bitcoin, though. Um, but you don't you don't see Bitcoin outperforming ETH. You know, if, if Bitcoin does good, ETH does good the same way. Sometimes ETH will do much better than Bitcoin, though. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, if Bitcoin is up 5%, ETH might be up like 12%. So mm. um, it's pretty cool to see that. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, yeah. What do you think ETH will go to? That's a good question. Um there was a certain point in in my life where i thought eth would overtake bitcoin um there was a certain point where the, that that was a belief of mine do i still think that's the case probably not i don't think eth will overtake bitcoin it can uh it's possible but i don't think it will um what i think it what I think ETH will do is it'll always maintain a percentage of what Bitcoin is worth. So right now it's worth about what, like 8% of what a Bitcoin is worth. So if, if that stays true, then I think it would stay 
in that range, that eight to 12% range of what Bitcoin is worth. So if Bitcoin is worth a hundred thousand, then ETH would be worth anywhere from like eight to 12,000 if, if it stays true to that range. Right. Okay. Nice. Nice. TD is waiting for Bitcoin to come down to 8,000. <laughs> I, I was I was telling myself t um, during like a couple months ago when all those nasty crashes happened and we were like, uh, you know, going down like crazy in the crypto space. I was telling myself, I was like, hey, if, if Bitcoin hits 9,000, 10,000, whatever, 9,000, I forget the number that I wanted. But, but I said, if that happens, uh, I was going to go in big and it didn't. So I, I just didn't yeah. didn't jump on any opportunity or anything. So um I don't know, man. Uh, I think that was a pretty crazy opportunity. That last dip that we had in the market was a really good buying opportunity for for everybody, and and the people who took advantage of it are are sitting pretty pretty nice right now. Like ETH went down to like eight hundred bucks, eight hundred and ninety bucks, or eight hundred eighty dollars. <laughs> Anybody who bought on that, you know, is up like what nine hundred dollars per ETH right now. Yeah, if they up. Exactly. Well, people are thinking exactly. it's gonna go. It's gonna go. You, people are trying to catch the bottom. You know, <laughs> like. Well, that's the the thing is there was so much fun. People were like, "Oh, it's, everything's going to zero. Like, no, man, no, nothing is going to zero. That's not gonna happen. And this this happens all the time. This is how markets work. You know, like the people. It, it's sad, but people manipulate markets, right? People who have a lot of money are able to move markets, and and that's what they do. They scare people out of positions, and then they get the price to where they want it to be, and then they're like, "All right, guys, time to buy up everyone's." Uh, like all the shit that people sold <laughs> um so that's how the rich get richer and, and that's how they that's how they get people to you know be fearful and that's why mm. fud is such a powerful thing man like we could do the most bullish thing in the world and you know not too many people would care but if we do something that causes fud everyone would care everyone would be like oh my god look at look at what shiba doji is doing like you know so right. Ne negativity always outshines positivity, but positivity is always the key to success, like no matter what. Yeah. Well, people coming in here and saying all oh, the YouTubers are predicting that it's going to go to $500, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, man, it can go anywhere, you know, you don't know. <laughs> like, I think it's a good price the, to yeah, the, buy it now. Yeah, the YouTubers will say anything to get clicks, man. They'll say anything. Yeah. If 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 I put a, a YouTube video out there and I I, I captioned it, um, ETH is going to go to three thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. I would probably get like let's say ten thousand clicks or ten thousand views, for example, yeah. right? But if I put a if I put a video out there and I captioned it, ETH is going to a hundred dollars, and let me tell you why, I'm going to get like a million views on that video. Mm -hmm. It's True. crazy, like psychology, the way that people kind of like word things and the, the way that people talk, they don't under, people don't understand that these people are getting paid when you watch their YouTube video. They'll say anything to grab your attention. They'll say anything for you to just watch their content. That's, you know, not everyone on YouTube is your saving grace. 99% of the time, they don't know what they're talking about. 99% of the time, they're reading the same articles that we're reading. And they're kind. Of, all they're doing is, all they're doing is just wording stuff differently, and they don't even understand what they're talking about. They're just being a voice to the people who are, uh, you know, not. Uh, they they don't know how to do their own research and do their own DD. So right. don't don't let anyone tell you what to do. Do do your own research and make your own decisions. You know, if I listen to people on YouTube all day, I I'd, I'd be not where I'm here today. So, I don't I don't watch yeah. any of them, man. I don't watch any of them YouTube videos. Me either, bro. They're they're all cringe, dude. They're all yeah. they're all cringe and exactly. Yeah, I mean pointless. some of them pointless if, to watch. If they're big channels, then what they do is they'll put money into a project and then they'll go and tell everyone else in their their subscribers yep. to go and buy it to get it pumping, you know? Yeah, exactly man. 
And that's why that's why a lot of the YouTubers that we work with we're not working with anymore is because they wanted us to give them that option. We're like, yo, we're not we're not doing that. We're not gonna like we're not gonna give you a benefit. Like, do you want to work with us in market? If not, then good. If you want to do something shady, this is not the place. Like, right. you know, go go work with your you know, these people are calling out like random new projects every single day yeah. and they have hundreds of thousands of followers subscribers on youtube and you know they act like they're crypto analysts but no in, in all reality what they are are just uh people who know that they could drive people to a project and then they they pretty much dump on the people that they they send there so yeah that's why we we don't work with those people man because it's not in our interests to to play their shady game we don't need to man we got our own youtube channel where we are the youtuber now you know with the videos that we're knocking out exactly man exactly it'll you know like the organic youtube videos that people make i still go on youtube and search shiba doge every now and then and yeah. see what types of videos people put out there all the videos all the new videos you put out there uh, that you see put that are put out there are all videos that people are making on their own free will like we are not paying anybody to make any youtube videos uh, and that's what makes me happy right it's it's good that people are actually making stuff because they like the project or because they're interested in the project so um you know bitcoin and ethereum aren't paying people to to make videos they're just gotten so big that people make videos about them so what's our plan our plan is to get so big that people have no choice but to acknowledge us right so exactly that's uh that's the best way to do it that is the best way to do it make us so yep. big that they need they need to now make videos for to get clicks and to get to get the views you know yeah exactly that's make, what they're after we'll become we'll be yeah, yeah. we'll be so, we'll be so big that they'll have no choice but to acknowledge us you know or yeah. they're gonna just be missing out so <laughs> exactly we'll be so big that if they don't make a video about us they're gonna lose thousands and thousands of views which they will know you know so yep. uh, you know and that's why when i see a good shiba Doge youtube video i send um our community to go and like it and stuff so that they keep making more because that's what they're doing it for they're doing it for the clicks and the views but it's helping us at the same time so if our community can go and like it um then they'll make more videos you know yeah and a lot of these videos you know um that people make obviously they're not getting like millions of views or anything but but they do get views they do get like a few hundreds of views and and those channels that get those few hundred views or thousand views those are those channels believe it or not they're pretty powerful because those are like 700 to a thousand people that are fully fully paying attention right because mm -hmm. it's not just like a big youtuber that people have no choice to watch this is just like they're those are people that are following these guys because these people because they probably actually like the person um they don't just follow them because everyone else in the world is following them so right. you know these little channels are are pretty effective man you know they they might not bring millions of people to us but you know that 10 or 20 people that come from watching a you know a two three minute youtube video that someone put out there they, they, they all add up and yeah. you know i'm sure a lot of a lot of people can um can relate to that right yeah and also them channels are growing as well you know with us a lot. yeah so, yeah you know they're growing and they'll they'll get to that stage and our videos will still be those they'll, they'll be pumping our videos out later on i mean that's it we just gotta uh, grow the we're gonna grow our project grow our holder base so that we're so big that none of them can resist us you know exactly that's it exactly we don't and it's to... not just going to be with shiba doge man we're going to have burn we're going to have yeah. the eft's we're going to have everything so yeah. you know the, the more the more things we have in our ecosystem the more chances we have of popping off you know like if one of our if one of our items uh, products pop off Mm -hmm. then it will cause a chain reaction where people are like look at look at yuga labs their board ape is their most successful product right yeah their board ape is worth like 77 eth or 80 eth right now but everything else in their ecosystem their dogs their mutant um bred apes their um 
new NFTs that they're coming out with, their ApeCoin, everything followed the success, right? Everything blows up, not just one thing, everything. So that is what we're doing here, guys. It's not about like, hey, let's just bring as much things we can, uh, as much things as we could possibly think of to the table. Let's bring all these things to the table strategically, scale them all up uh, in a manner where, you know, they're they're doing things that are changing the game. And eventually one of them is going to take off. Eventually one of them will find success. And when that success comes, it will bring success to the entire ecosystem, not just that one niche, right? Yeah, obviously one thing will be more successful than the other, but the point is that everything is going to be following that same trend line. I mean, you see it happen with, with you know, the leaders in the space, with Yuga Labs, with, um, you know, a bunch of these other uh, people out there. I can't think of off the top of my head right now, but it, it just makes sense to, to have an ecosystem. Yeah, exactly. I'm happy that we're taking our time building quality products, you know, like so far. I don't know anything that we've bought out that we've had any problem or issues with, you know. Everything. Yeah, man, that's that's the key. That's the key. There's no point in rushing, man. Uh, rushing will will do more harm than good. You know, one little issue, especially on the blockchain, especially with you know all all the all the resources and money people um, you know put into things. We don't want to. We don't want to build something that's not gonna be right or not functional and yeah. you know we if we do that once that's it we lose all we lose all our credibility so we don't want to we don't want to put shit out there we want to put good quality things out there and we'll we'll take all the time we need to to make sure that that happens right yeah of course 100 percent. i know i know certain projects out there that have uh, bought out all these things but the community can't connect to it they, when they connect this is gone missing and that's happening and there's so many issues and now they're just getting dumped on man by the community you know yeah i mean remember what happened remember what happened with saitama mm -hmm. they they were like they had their sata mask or whatever coming out and and you know just the idea of that people loved it so much they pumped to like I think they pumped to like four billion dollars in market cap at their all-time high, um, mm. which is pretty crazy. Four billion dollars in market cap, and then their product released, and it was a complete shit show. Nobody could use it, right. and it killed. It killed them. They went from four billion dollar market cap to like fifty million dollars in market cap. Yeah, and the worst thing was. <laughs> The other project that I was talking about um, said that we're actually kind of dissing them, saying they, you know, they did they had the issues and blah blah blah. We're not going to have them kind of issues, and they started having issues later, and they're having the same yep. problem. You know, the community is literally just dumping on the project, and because you know, if you keep bringing out unreliable products, then community is going to lose faith in the dev team you know well they're, yeah they're going to know yeah they're going to know that you're just lying to them right they're going to know like yeah. that it's all hype and it's all it's all smoke and mirrors that's not what we're trying to do we're, we're trying what we're trying to do is be fully transparent and um obviously we see what happens to the projects that aren't like that and lie to their community they don't succeed right or or they they literally go from like i said four billion dollars in market cap to they're sitting at like a hundred mil right now and and just that's after like a small recovery uh, i think they went down bill. to like someone just seven bill seven yeah it could have yeah. yeah it could have been seven billion i don't know exactly what it was yeah. but yeah. It, it was pretty high it was pretty high but it's like go, going from seven billion to to 50 million the, i mean that's like that's literally like everything gone, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That's why I would, I don't want the dev teams. I know you're not going to, but I don't want you being rushed and the dev teams being rushed and just chucking out a product that's, that may, may yeah. or may not work, you know? And then we, the FOD is more powerful. Like if, if you get a faulty product, that news travels fast. If you got a good product, it doesn't, the news doesn't travel. You know what I mean? Yep. 
Yep. I mean, look what happened. Remember what happened with um, the burn launch? You know, we had we had issues, so we didn't launch. We postponed the launch, and everybody was spreading FUD. They were like, "Oh my God!" Like, like there was no reason to even spread FUD because there was no product out yet. Yeah. Um, but people were just spreading FUD because uh, we, we postponed the date. But the thing is, it's like imagine we had released it on that day with with the bugs that we had found. That mm -hmm. would have been a hundred times worse than postponing it and fixing it. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, man, that I, I, I don't think we'll ever be rushed into doing something. We have too many people on our, on our dev team, um, that they also, you know, don't want to make products that don't work because, you know, their names are attached to these, right? Like right. that's their resume. If they ever want to work at like a reputable place in the future too, you know, and these people look into them and they ask, like, hey, what have you built? And they say, like, hey, I built X, Y, and Z for X, Y, and Z. And they look into it and they're like, yeah, but you built something that doesn't work. Yeah. You know, these people, they don't want they don't want to build stuff that doesn't work. They want to build the coolest and greatest things because they're building their own resumes, too. Yeah. I mean, hopefully they don't ever have to go work anywhere else because hopefully we can um, make sure we always have a sustainable ecosystem for our developers and keep mm -hmm. hiring more people. But, but regardless, you know, these people are driven and, and they want quality stuff out there uh, just as much as we do. Right. Right. And like some of these projects, they use developers from like India, like places where they can't even see them, you know? Um, yeah. What about our developers, like the developers that you guys are hiring? Like, where are they local? Yeah. All of all of our all of our developers we interview in person. All of our developers we either we either we fly out to meet them or we fly them out to meet us. Most cases we fly them out to meet us, um, unless they live in a fun place like Miami or Vegas, then we'll mm -hmm. we'll find a reason to go out there. <laughs> <laughs> but but, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we interview all of our our developers on hand and uh, they go through a like a nda thing they go through mm -hmm. a, a vetting thing um yeah man uh yeah we, none of our developers are from india <laughs> right that's what i'm saying like some of these uh projects they put it because it's cheaper obviously if you go to like somewhere in bangladesh or wherever yeah you can give them the job it's gonna be a lot cheaper yeah. but like the, the quality but, of work you can't monitor it from here from where you are yeah i know i know it, no, no, those people they'll either build something and you'll never be able to get support ever again right yeah. they'll they'll you pay you'll pay them and they're gone or they'll just scam you from the very beginning you know well, you just pay them and they never deliver anything right well i deal with the india a lot yeah. myself but as a business i import goods from there and um if they, like my products sometimes they have problems right and i'll i'll phone right. them up and i'll say um there's this problem that problem can you fix it yeah yeah next time it'll be fixed on your next order next order comes problem still there F phone them again yep. um can you fix it on my next order yeah yeah sure no problem this time definitely it'll be fixed order comes same problem there it's like it never gets fixed so what i'm saying is like you have to literally be there like i'll have to literally fly there and stand there in order for that to get fixed, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, but they'll send me the parts. They'll send me the extra parts so that I can fix it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they're not going to fix yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. They're not going to fix it. That That's the thing is like, there's quality differences and you you get what you pay for, you know? Right. If, if, we, if we pay for a cheap developer overseas that we don't know anything about and we're just looking at, whatever resume they decide to show us mm -hmm. um there is a very high chance that it's going to be a crummy developer that isn't going to be able to deliver what we want yeah. but we're yeah the people that we work with you know we we look at what they've built and and we don't just hire them for what we want to build right now mm. we kind of like interview them to see what they're capable of and what we can possibly build in the future too right. um and that's that's the important thing because, you know, we need people who are smarter than us. Like no matter what, uh, if I always tell, I always tell my friends and family and, and stuff too, and I'll tell you guys too. It's like, mm -hmm. if you ever walk into a room and you're the smartest person in that room, then you're in the wrong room. 
You mm -hmm. never want to be the smartest person in the room. Um, I know it sounds cool, but you never want to be the smartest person in the room because that just, you want to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you, yep. uh, more successful than you. You want to be in that environment because it drives you to be better. It drives you to continue to get smarter and, and find ways to become more successful. And, you know, the talent that we onboard, yeah, you know, a lot of times they're a lot smarter than we are, but we're smarter in different ways, right? You know, I, I have yeah. I have my strong traits, they have their strong traits, and that's the balance that a successful company project needs is you need people who are strong in different departments in order to to grow and flourish. So right. I think we do a pretty good job on that end. Just need a good team, you know, good, trustworthy, reliable team. That's it. That's all it is, man. You need a you need a strong team. Even even the best boxer in the world, he can't be the best boxer in the world if he didn't have a good team. Yeah. You know. And when you're when you're a boxer and and uh, you're in that ring, you're all alone. Your team's not there, but you still need a team to prepare you, get you to where you need to be. You yeah. know, in order for you to be the best. So team is important. Exactly. I mean, some of these projects are giving their jobs over to Fiverr. You know, like, <laughs> come on, guys. Yeah, so. I know, and that's fine to do. Like, if if it's like a like a promotional like piece that you need, or like yeah. a graphic made or something. But it's like if you're using Fiverr for your development, right, right. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna make it, bro. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. Exactly, like a poster yeah. or something or something silly yeah. like that. I, I do. That. I use some sometimes sometimes when our 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 image guy is too busy. Yeah. You know, like when he's like really busy cuz we we only have one guy that makes our graphics like our images for for marketing material and stuff. Yeah. When he's busy and I feel bad to like ask him to make something even though I need something built and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll feel bad. I'll be like, "Damn, I just told this guy to make like seven things and now I'm going to tell him to make an eighth one." Oh, yeah. Uh uh, I'll just I'll just go to Fiverr. I'll go to Fiverr. I'll be like, yo, just make this real quick, you know. And they do a pretty good job. Like, you know, it, it's not it's not yeah. horrible, but I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't use it for anything other than just like posters or promotional graphics. You or wouldn't anything use like that. them for holding the contracts, would you? Nah, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do know there are people out there that do it, man. And yeah. It's shit. <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, you could get away with it. <laughs> you could get away with it if you're lucky, but it's like, I mean, you're not going to build anything crazy. You're not going to build anything impressive on Fiverr, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm not, not, not dissing Fiverr, anyways, guys. I, I mean, I use Fiverr myself for, for like little things, like a little bit of accounting or something like a picture or something like that. But, you know. You can see that that's what I'm saying to the community. The community should understand that the dev team are using high quality experienced people, you know. That's actually not a bad idea, Roof, to like have a, imagine we build a platform that mimics Fiverr, but for Web3 mm. and people can like freelance and pay people with crypto. You know, Man. that's actually a pretty cool. That's actually a pretty cool uh, little website. Because, you know what? That that would take off. I'm telling you, that would take off. It might. It's uh, not a bad idea. Not might. I'm positive that will take off. There's nothing out there like it. And Fiverr. Um. It's okay, man, but other, uh, in the, the people that work for Fiverr, they're looking for something else. And they, I know that because I've spoke to a lot of them. So, it's a good idea, you know. Why don't we do that? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely something I'll think about because it does sound interesting, man. It, it does sound interesting. Mm-hmm. For sure it does. I mean, I don't know what it would take to get something like that up and going. Um, obviously, it would take probably a lot of money and probably a... I mean, it's fine. The money's not the problem, but the time is definitely the problem. Because um, 
but yeah, I, if I mean, I don't know how it would fit in our ecosystem, but I guess it would just be something cool to have in in Web three, right? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. In order well, later, you can change it in order to use it. Once we build hundreds of thousands of people, um, you can just change it. Then that they they can only transact with Shiba Doge. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> or I mean, like. Imagine, imagine you allow like other cryptos to to kind of like apply to uh, be used on there too, like mm. you know, and then people can people can choose what they want to get paid in, whether they want to get paid in ETH or Shiba mm. Doge or Burn Token or uh, Shiba or whatever, right? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Yes, yeah, yeah, you can brainstorm some ideas, but that is. That would take off um, for sure. I'm positive that would take yeah. off. If we lower the percentage and the price, um, and it's crypto. Yeah, man. Yeah, because people wouldn't even have to get 1099s or anything. Um, mm -hmm. No W2s. Yep. That would, that would be pretty cool. I'll talk. I'll talk to Alex about it this week and see if we can brainstorm some ideas on 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 that. That would actually be pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah, and you'll get you'll get like tons of people joining joining that um, from all over the world. You know, majority of people. If you go to Fiverr, they're from India, Bangladesh, China, like. A lot of them from Asia, you know? Um, yeah. It would be cool, like, a promotional thing, too. Like, you could be, like, sign up and get, like, $5 worth of Shiba Doge just for creating an account. You know, like, that would be a cool way of getting people to uh, sign in, create an account, and also add to our holder list, too. That's what Fiverr does. They give the... Uh, when you join, they give you, like, a Fiverr. So... That's they, pretty cool. If you go and use the, the, the thing with Fiverr is you, you've seen the interface. It's quite easy to navigate. And that's what people like, the ease, you know, of finding yeah. and then clicking and then the messaging. Um, you can message. But some of these other sites that are competitors, they have a limit to how much you can message the, uh, the seller or the buyer. Both ways, it's limited. Right. Whereas with Fiverr, you can it's unlimited. You can just message as much as you want. That's another thing. So if you make it easy to navigate and just make it really simple, um, people will start coming over here yeah? because they're sick and tired of Fiverr because their rules and regulations are kind of pissing people off, right? So Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and their like quality of service has dropped pretty dramatically in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, I used Fiverr a few years ago to um, to make a website. Mm -hmm. They made a really good website. And then a buddy of mine wanted to recreate the, a website like that. So mm -hmm. I, I just told him to go on Fiverr and I told him I, I told him how to do it. This was like probably a couple of years back. And I think he used the same guy that I had used and the right. quality was just horrible. It was so bad and mm. the price was higher than, than what I had paid. Right. Yeah. Why was the quality lower? What do you think was wrong? The, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know what it takes to build a website. Um, I've, I've never built one myself personally, mm. but um, it was just like a very basic non-responsive um right. just sluggish so i don't know if it was the servers or what it was but okay i see yeah yeah man speak to alex see what he says because that without branding on it you know yeah it's going to be powerful even our community members will use it because i know our community members are running businesses and all kinds of stuff and they need these kind of services. I need it all the time. Uh, if I need some a bit of accounting done, I always go on five. I got one guy that, that quickly does some calculations for me. Um, 
if I need like little posters made or business cards and stuff, I just go on Fiverr and get it designed. You know, I always yeah. make fi- yeah. without Fiverr, I'd be like, to be honest, I'd be kind of struggling. You know, because the, I'd have to go and then go looking for a on the high street somewhere for for a place, and then go in there, and they just charge you so much money just to make design a little card for you. You know, so yeah, man, it's crazy. Yeah, they charge an arm and a leg. Yep. Out nowadays, Hello? yeah, I, freelance, is the, freelance is the way to go. What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? So you know what the um the um breathing the um breathing for the NFTs, right? Yeah. So you know about that um the the what was it called? Like I'm gonna need to um look at the messages one more time. Hold on. Yeah, um so you know the crates. And it um it's gonna come with things. Can you like equip it to your um your NFT? It, will it be something like that? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, thank you. That was just a question because I was um wondering because if so, it's like a game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you'll be able to equip it, and um it'll change the whole cosmetic of what your NFTs do, and then in the future, um some of those. Some of those will also have like special abilities and and um, you, you know like perks and stuff that that'll be added to those equivalents as well. All right, thank you. No problemo. Yeah, man. I was gonna say I was. What do you think of uh, like some kind of challenges, a competition with challenges like? Um, 100 burpees, for example. I done that today. I mean, that was that was hard, man. <laughs> um, I was like, I'm gonna do it. It took me a bit longer than some of these guys on YouTube, but man, I'm in pain. My arms are in pain. My so, everything's in pain right now. I'm having painkillers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Burpees are are tough, man. I haven't done burpees in in a very long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um. But yeah, we could we could do we could do challenges. Uh, I don't think we do like physical challenges, but mm-hmm. um, eventually when we start like gamifying things, we'll we'll have different challenges to get, um, yeah. you know, different kinds of rewards out of it. Uh, we want to we want to make the EFTs like a pretty common thing to get rewarded with, so mm-hmm. we could like kind of you know reward our community for being part of the community, right. um, and and you know introducing EFTs is a very uh fun way for us to be able to do that um mm. where it's not like us giving people you know just straight up like tokens but we're giving them something that they can um customize with and right. obviously some will be a lot rarer than others so uh aesthetically like everything is going to be cool nice. but what made you want to do the what made you want to do the 100 burpees you're trying to get in shape or something or you do you well, do that normally well remember that day you dropped that message um, about the calorie uh, being deficient yeah. in calories. Um, I thought, I was kind of thinking about doing some exercise and then I forgot about it. But when you dropped that message, that kind of like got me thinking, you know, like actually I should start doing this because I need to lose a bit of weight. And I was thinking, yeah, let me try this because I, I totally forgot about the that until you wrote that. And then I started doing that. Um, then I went on to a keto diet from there, right? <laughs> and now, obviously, I'm trying to do some find the best exercise. Um, and I thought I just looked on YouTube and these started coming up. So I start. <laughs> so I thought, let me try a couple. And I done I done about ten. And I was like, I stopped. Man, I was like, what the hell? How did like? <laughs> I was watching on YouTube. The guy looked. It looked so easy, you know. The way he was doing it. Yeah, yeah. When you're in, when you're in shape, it's easy. But um, if you had if you haven't done it before, it's very difficult. Um, but but mm-hmm. even like me myself, like I, I go to the gym almost every single day. Uh, I try to go seven days a week. Mm-hmm. But even for me, 
I wouldn't be able to do burpees like consistently. Burpees is a full body, like it's a killer, man. Burpees will take you out. Uh, You don't need to do like a high intensity thing like that to lose weight. It's very Hmm. simple. All you got to do is be in a caloric deficit, eat less calories than what your body normally burns Mm -hmm. and just do some light, light, light walking and, um, you don't even have to jog. Like I, I personally, I lost like 30 pounds when I first started, um, mm. by literally just walking for 20 minutes on the treadmill on the wow. incline, like a, like a eight incline at like two miles per hour, very low, but that's all you really need. Uh, the, the diet, the food that you eat doesn't even matter either. You can eat pizza all day. Mm. All you got to do is make sure you, you eat, um, the right amount of calories as long mm. as you don't surpass your calories you you'll you'll lose weight but yeah man i mean yeah, yeah man you just got you just got me you just got me um onto a diet i started going onto a diet after i read that i was like i'm i was serious <laughs> man when i was telling you i'm gonna i'm gonna do this um <laughs> yeah man no me me personally like after I got diagnosed with, with non-Hodgkin lymphoma a few years ago and, and all that, like I mm. knew I had to start taking care of myself. So um, I, I started working out and I started eating clean. And yeah. it's crazy how much of your life changes by doing that. And you don't realize it because, um, mm. you know, if you don't do it, it, everything seems normal. But then when you start doing it and you start feeling the benefits of it, you're like, dang, like I was missing out on this and yeah it's definitely not worth it's not worth the the this feels better than eating chocolate you know so <laughs> mm. yep i totally agree totally agree i mean i don't i'm not a gym person i don't go to the gym i've never re, i've never gone to the gym when i was young a kid i had some dumbbells and whatever that's it but i carry a lot of stuff i carry a lot of boxes i'm moving boxes heavy boxes around that's kind of my little bit of exercise but Obviously, it's not a proper, you know, push up or I'm not I'm not working all the muscles, you know. So yeah, over time, I've gone on, I'm I've become unfit, you know, um, and now I'm just thinking I need, I need to start cha- I need to change that I need to become fit I need to get a six pack, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Leo? We need to, I need to get a six pack to protect all my Shiba dogs, you know, when I'm rich. I need to protect my money. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta burn some zeros, bro. Yeah, bro. Let's <laughs> see. I'm gonna burn some zeros, and I'm gonna try and get myself a nice, nice six pack. Well, uh, that's a joke. I'm. I won't go that far, but I, I just wanna get in shape. You know, get in shape. Yeah. See, nah, you could do it. You could do it. You just need to be consistent and. I mean, it took me a while, right? Like, it took me, like, a year before I was able to, like, see my whole body transform. But mm. um, it, it happens fairly quick. So I mean, I'm, I'm at a point right now where, where when I first started, um, mm. when I first started working out, I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't be able to bench press, like, 125 pounds. I, I couldn't do it. I, mm. Not even for one one rep. Like, I couldn't do it. Now... Uh, fast forward like two years and and I'm close to 285 pounds on my bench press for one rep which is pretty heavy man considering I only weigh 180 pounds myself so So what are you doing 200 and what 250 did you say 280 285 was was the most that I've ever done I'm just checking that in kg what's that in kg 120 uh, 130 yeah. kgs yeah wow that is that is a lot man that is a lot it's crazy how like i would have never imagined that i could do that much but eventually like you know over 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 time you your body gets so strong and you don't realize it and it just it, it feels cool mm-hmm. like when i say you know walk into a room and you don't want to be the smartest person in the room. It's not the same as like you, when you walk into a room, you want to be the strongest person in the room. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you feel good, right? You, know, you yeah. look at everyone. You're like, yeah, I'm stronger yeah. than all of y'all. Yeah. So. <laughs> and, and they know it too. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. That's man. the one thing like you I'm can't, a... you can't buy that. 
you could buy yeah. everything else, but you can't buy strength and you can't buy, you know, having a, a nice body. Like you have to work for that. That's something that you have no choice, whether how rich you are, you, you have to do the same thing as everybody else. You have to go and earn it. And that's what, that's what gives me satisfaction out of it. Knowing that like, Hey, yeah. you know, I have all the money that I can ever want, but I can't, I can't buy this. This is something that I have to go and, yeah, and, and just I, do. And I've, and I knew for a long time that I need to like, like put, lose a lose a bit of weight you know like because i've been my, my my other my previous job was i was active in the garage all the time working on cars you can imagine how manual work that is like i i lost weight when i was working you know but now that i've switched to this other job that i do that when i where i import products and sell it but this job doesn't require me to do as much as manual work it's a bit of both now i've yeah. got a lot of computer talking to customers blah 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 and then i'm carrying a couple of boxes around getting products out of the boxes so it's not as manual so it's made me unhealthy it's i've been eating and i've been just putting on weight and over the years i've been putting on more weight and like you said only you can sort that out you know um you gotta be mentally strong to go and exercise every day go on a diet and you know look after your body you gotta that's important you know and like I knew it for a long time, but you know, that message you dropped, that kind of like triggered me to do something, you know? That's all it is, man. It just takes one person to motivate you and, and that's it. I know yeah. somebody motivated me when I started, obviously it was like, you know, I was dealing with health stuff and, and all that, which also motivated me. But I looked yeah. at some, some of my other friends that, that were doing it and, and, you know, talked to them and they motivated me. And mm. once you like fall into a rhythm of it, then it just becomes, becomes natural. And that's it. That's all. That's what I've been doing. I've been eating less. I've reduced my carbs and all that. Yeah. Reduced my carbs. And if you don't, if you don't see, if you don't see progress after like your first like two or three days in the gym, just mm. start taking steroids. <laughs> I'm what? kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Bro. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be. I don't want to be one of them guys, bro, with big muscles, man, looking like a rock. My wife's gonna be like, man, you, I don't want to become near you, man. You're like a rock, man. You know? You're gonna be the Arnold <laughs> Roofinator. Uh, yeah, bro. What are you trying to do? I'll be like, it's Leo's fault, <laughs> man. Leo told me to take these steroids. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come nah, in. Man, stay away from all that crap. <laughs> you know, you know the first. The, you know the um. I done some exercise a couple of days ago. I was just I was just doing some push-ups and a few different exercises. And you know, my, my, under my armpits, these, uh, both sides, they're swollen up, right? <laughs> they're swollen up. So I was walking, I went to my, um, my, my wife's mom's house and I walked in and my wife goes, why are you acting like a, why are you walking like a G? <laughs> I'm like, with my arms are out like a bodybuilder, you know, <laughs> so, so I'm pushing them out and I look like a bodybuilder, right? She's like, why, why are you walking like it? Like you're some kind of G and I'm like, what do you mean? So like, look, why you why your arms out like that? I'm like, because both sides are sore. sore. <laughs> I'm sore, man. I, I've still got pain now. I'm like sore all over, you know. Um, yeah, that was funny, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, that was funny. All right, guys. Yeah. Let's call it here. Um, cool, I'm gonna cool. get going. <clears throat> we'll be back here on Monday with the the whole staking. Um. AMA, so we'll lay out a whole bunch of stuff for you guys on Monday. Um, and we'll also have some more news coming up in the next few days as well. Like I'll I'll, I'll pin pin things in the chat here and there as as the days go, but keep your eyes open for that. Like as always, I, I haven't been as active in the Telegram this past week. Like I said, you know, I was dealing with some personal personal things, but um, I'm almost pretty much all done with all that. Uh, I, obviously you guys knew like my grandpa and stuff uh he wasn't feeling well and, and all that but regardless you know everything is out of the way now um but yeah we'll be back on monday i uh, apologize again for my absence this week uh if you guys need anything from me any questions anything like that feel free to tag me in the chat feel free to reach out to me i'll never dm you first nobody from our team will ever dm you first so be careful of you know don't get scammed out there. Um, <clears throat> but as always, if you miss Doge, that sucks. If you miss Shiba, 
That also sucks. If you miss Shiba Doge, maybe I'll still love you, but that doesn't change the fact that you suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Peace. Love, peace.